Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And um, so just before we get started, I guess, um, I put out some uh, some fundamental questions as well as some psychology and just to see and check the temperature I guess of YouTube and what traders are really uh, thinking about certain concepts and themes and uh, fundamental technical analysis and uh, I, I basically asked a question um, regarding um, a, a bit of a fundamental um, conundrum and had a few votes, 125 votes so far, and it was pretty much 50-50. Uh, and uh, if you stick around uh, to the end of this video, I'm going to be answering this, um, this question and giving you really a kind of breakdown as to whether you should go long bank A or go long bank B. So uh, stick around until the end of the video and I'll basically get into the answer on this. So our approach just quickly when it comes to uh, the Forex market is really to apply fundamental and technical analysis and use the best of both worlds in order to establish really the best trading opportunities. So before we get into the technicals and a bit of in-depth fundamentals, let's, let's look at the week ahead and um, zoom in, in a little bit on this small writing. So second quarter, the second quarter earnings season continues. So that's to do with the, uh, the stocks elsewhere. Flash PMI surveys for the US, UK, Eurozone and Australia will be keenly watched. While central banks in the Euro area, China, uh, Euro area is really the one that we're looking at, uh, will be deciding on monetary policy. So if you're trading the euro, that is going to be uh, very interesting. China, to a certain degree, because um, uh, they are the world's economic engine. And so uh, all eyes really are on China when it comes to whether they want to devalue their currency or whether they're happy with the valuation of their currency, because that does affect um, you know, global growth, right? Or well, it's a factor anyway. The other key data to follow include US building permits and housing starts, not so important. UK and Canada retail sales, Eurozone consumer confidence, Japan trade balance and inflation. That's going to be something uh, worth watching and Australia retail sales. So um, I think the really the big news uh, this week, especially if you're trading the euro, is going to be what the euro, uh, the ECB, European Central Bank, uh, decide this week on, on monetary policy and forward guidance. So, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this week. So let's get into the technicals and a bit more fundamentals and starting off on the dollar index and uh, the dollar has had this uh, recent run up and this is really due to again monetary policy right this is when the federal reserve the fed decided that they were a bit hawkish on hiking rates reason being is because of you know of the economy gdp and really inflation as well right inflation now recently um, inflation has really been getting a bit out of hand. So um, the Fed on July the 15th, Fed Powell, I think he testified to Congress and uh, one of the headlines was that Fed's Powell says inflation uptick larger than expected. And um, what what really is, is putting pressure on uh, the Federal Reserve is uh, inflation now the federal reserve have a two percent target right and if they're above that two percent target which they are i think it's something like 5.4 percent then um it puts pressure on the federal reserve to want to hike rates which is usually you know which has the effect of appreciating right so hiking rates has the effect of appreciating a currency the problem is though is that the um the economy might not be able to support a rate hike because it makes um, borrowing and loaning expensive, right? It makes uh, mortgage costs more expensive. And if the, the economy hasn't had a chance to uh, be able to sustain uh, rate hikes, then it could actually hurt the economy. So the Federal Reserve are very cautious with raising rates too soon. So the expectation is at the moment bullishness for the dollar. I've been saying this uh, for a little bit, but with some caution. 
some 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 uh, some real caution because if GDP doesn't grow right and doesn't um, uh, isn't and, and it maybe it flat lines or the number doesn't come out as good as expected, then we could actually be in something called stagflation, right? Stagflation. Or I'm not going to necessarily spell it all out, but stagflation is when you have um, the economy isn't doing great, but you have inflation well above the uh, central bank target, right? So it puts the central bank in a bit of a tough spot, and I say a bit of a tough spot, a very tough spot. And um, if that does uh, come out, if the GDP numbers come out and it stalls or not as good as what's expected, I would expect and you know the, the dollar to really kind of uh, try you know sell off because of the fact that um, uh, th it pushes the, uh, the 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 expectation for a rate hike uh, further into the future rather than closer. Right. So at the moment, I think all eyes are going to be on GDP growth and uh, but. At the moment, as the expectation for GDP growth is, you know, to, to basically grow and recover, you know, you're, you're basically seeing the dollar um, and, and the dollar overall and the dollar index start to, um, you know, go higher. So as long as the data supports the narrative, then it's continued really dollar buys, you know. Um, so that's really the uh, the the um, the understanding behind it. If you do want to take advantage potentially of some short trades, um, again, I would probably wait for some sort of negative dollar catalyst um, to get involved. Uh, I think this area here, the highs, the ninety threes, um, would be a decent area. But again, waiting for you know the catalyst really. And again, you're not really trading the uh, the dollar index. You're just looking for confluence. If it starts to sell off on the dollar index, then look for dollar crosses like the dollar yen, dollar Swiss, dollar CAD, etc. So moving on to the dollar yen. In the dollar yen, we did have some risk off sentiment, which basically pushed prices, you know, down, but came down to a nice demand zone. And now we're in this, um, uh, I guess we've, we've kind of been within this little range between the 110.70 and the 109.53. Uh, now, for me, again, if um, the dollar does prove uh, to be, uh, you know, uh, GDP does, you know, grow, then for me, any pullbacks are buying opportunities. And as long as we stay in that risk on sentiment, then that's where really I want to be um, is my direction of travel. There is a bit of a supply zone here, not the strongest area of supply, and uh, really be looking to trade that if, for example, we get into some sort of risk off sentiment. Yeah, so there, there are global concerns, global worries, and it really does take hold of the market, right? Then you want to see something like that, or if prices come up to this uh, 111. Uh, 10 area to 111.66 area but and then risk does kind of switch to off or you get some negative dollar news and dollar sentiment then you're looking at any kind of short trades within these uh, supply zones but while uh, risk is on um, or more on than off for now um, potentially uh, this could be decent for any kind of long trades um, uh, uh, at these demand zones Moving on to the dollar Swiss, dollar Swiss, pretty much same as dollar yen. Um, prices did come down to this demand zone. There was a really nice stop hunt below that level that I think some traders managed to get involved in. It goes beyond really the scope of this um, this uh, video, but from a daily demand zone perspective, um, prices did come down into the zone. Brilliant, and it's held and uh, potentially again, uh, as long as the Fed remain, um, uh, I guess, the expectation for the Fed to hike rates before the Swiss franc, then the, um, the the market should want to make its way up. We don't know necessarily, I'm not saying that this week is going to keep making higher highs and higher lows, who knows. But generally, the path of least resistance should be to the upside. So let's see what happens uh, with that. If you are looking to buy the uh, the Swiss franc and you think the Swiss franc, Swiss franc is a bargain in and around these areas, I would definitely say the uh, this is going to be the first area to look for sell trades um, before looking at getting short. And again, uh, if there's any kind of risk off sentiment that comes into the market, then that should benefit the Swiss franc.
Moving on to the dollar CAD and the dollar CAD um, again a bit of a tricky situation where you've got two uh, currencies that are you know uh, uh, pretty much um, hiking rates or looking to hike rates at some point in the future sooner rather than later and so these and I always you know say this that this is more of a difficult trade while the you know the dollar has a bit more positive sentiment um, the Canadian dollar has been tapering and reducing their um, their their quantitative easing, which should again be uh, positive for the Canadian dollar. The question becomes, though, is that um, you know you want to really trade divergences or convergences, right? You're not looking to trade for me anyway. When it comes to selecting currency pairs, these trades are a bit more difficult to uh, really kind of predict turning points and really kind of bargain prices. Although I do think that probably the limit of the move is coming soon to some degree, but again that also is dependent upon uh, what uh, the uh, GDP, um, the dollar, the US GDP comes out as, right? If it still comes out as positive, you'd probably start to see the, the path of least resistance to the upside. But again, it's probably being countered by, again, maybe some positive Bank of Canada news. So it's very difficult when you have convergences and divergence type trades, that's when you can see uh, and predict trends a bit more easier than uh, you know, two currencies that are both strong potentially or both weak potentially. Try to avoid these types you know, of trades. Anyways, um, again, if you do think that the dollar is a bargain at some point, then you're looking for pullbacks into that demand zone. Or if you think that the Canadian dollar at some point will have will be a bargain in and around this area and maybe some dollar weakness, then I think probably anywhere in and around these zones should be a decent uh, sell. But not a pair that I'm really interested in, to be fair. Uh, moving on to the uh, dollar, New, Ze oh, sorry, New Zealand dollar, US dollar. And again, we've been in this range for about, uh, probably price has been contained between the 71 area and the 69.20 area from June. So probably about a month now, a month's worth of trading. And that again, makes sense. Reason why is because you have two uh, decent currencies uh, looking to appreciate and um, but with the New Zealand dollar right New Zealand dollar there's some recent news um, about the um, central bank paves the way for a 2021 hike so the New Zealand dollar are actually really ahead of uh, pretty much all central banks uh, when it comes to hiking rates hiking rates again has the or should have the effect of appreciating a currency now against something like the dollar you may not you know see um, that play out in the sh in the short term or the medium term uh, to 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 any massive degree because you've counter to that you've also got the dollar who are looking to hike rates but against a weaker currency for example let's say for example the the yen or the Swiss franc that's where you may want to look for um, some long trades and buying the New Zealand dollar so this currency pair I'm not too keen on trading um, there are definitely uh, better pairs and easier pairs um, or easier currencies to trade the New Zealand dollar against. But if you do want to get involved in this trade to the um, to the upside, let's say for example you want to buy the New Zealand dollar, I would say any kind of fresh area of, of demand in and around this zone here. And in fact, I'm probably going to delete this here. So I think that area there, anything below that, uh, 0 0.6930 area um, and into that that would be a decent buy if you do want to get short then you're looking at that area there or at least that area um, here this supplies only 71 uh, 25 area but um, again this is probably a harder trade to take um, and not necessarily the most desirable pair in my opinion but again this is not financial advice not by any long shot Moving on to the pound dollar and the pound dollar. Um, we had some news, in fact, regarding the pound. And it was from um, Mr. Saunders, who is a voting member of the Bank of England um, uh, on the... On, on the, on the uh, um, he's a policymaker, basically, Michael Saunders. And the Bank of England may need to stop his bond-buying stimulus program earlier than planned due to risk 
due to the risk of rising inflation, according to policymaker Michael Saunders. So in a speech in the morning or that morning three days ago, Saunders said that the activity appears to have recovered a bit more than expected back in May when the bank drew up its latest economic forecasts. And uh, there was, in fact, if I scroll up a little bit, there was a reaction to that, I think, or was it here? Uh, da, 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 I thought it was, I thought it was here, but basically the pound that day, um, uh, that time in history, it did actually, um, oh, here it was. So the pound dollar spiked almost 70 pips in the last 30 minutes after comments from the Bank of England policymaker Michael Saunders. So removing stimulus also has the effect of, um, uh, again, of, of strengthening a, a, a currency, not necessarily in the, in, in, in immediately, but um, uh, overall we could see prices drift to the upside. Um, again, against the dollar would be a very difficult trade because you also have the US dollar that is also looking to high crates, right? So it's a bit less predictable when it comes to, um, you know, looking for the direction of travel the path of least resistance. Um, so again, not really a currency pair that I would look or be interested in at the moment. Let me just, uh, sorry, one second. I just want to lower this to around there. You've got some hidden demand from there. So I think overall, um, again, not too sure in this currency pair. And when you're not sure, just stay out, right? But if you do want to get long, I would say probably a deeper pullback into these zones. Probably the 136 would definitely look like a definite bargain at some point. Um, you'd kind of expect you know price to range at some point it looks like where we've got a, a potential range is really from here to here so this could be the bottom of the 137 could be the bottom of the range um and then we could see uh, some some pound strength or potentially some dollar weakness or profit taking going on in and around these areas and when you do have for example um two currencies that are either strong or weak Generally, you may see or you should see a ranging market at some point, and it looks like we are ranging between the, you know these two points. So we could be at the lower end of the range, and that would be a decent buying opportunity if you wanted to be long on the pound. You're looking to get uh, long on the dollar. You do have a bit of lower highs, lower lows being made right there. You can zoom in and um we've got some supply right here so any kind of pullbacks intraday by the way as well you can either trade some daily or intraday so zoom down into lower time frames like maybe the four hour if you you know line this up with some um you know uh, support and resistance for example and the top end of that uh demand zone or sorry that supply zone is decent you know, for a potential short trade if you want to get short there. Um, and the guys will also, who are in the group, will recognize uh, what this is as well. We've got a bit of a stop hunt around there. And speaking of uh, the group, um, my mentoring actually comes to a close in the next uh, eight hours. Um, so it's around about maybe 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock um, London time. If you're not in the group from then, then that's pretty much it for the next um maybe it might be for the year i might open up one more time uh later on this year but really and truly when you're looking and trying to trade one of the benefits of mentoring is really getting direct feedback right if you're trying to learn something in during a classroom you really want to be able to ask you know your teacher questions right there's only so much watching videos will get you there's only so um uh, you know, you, you only learn so much from um, watching videos and mentorship is really important in any endeavor in life. So uh, take the chance to join the uh, discussion room, join mentoring. Uh, the guys are already finding um, some success in the room. Kieran, for example, um, recently he said he just joined last week. Nice to meet us, everyone on the platform. We are a friendly bunch, learning a lot of new stuff which he never knew and my fundamental analysis videos are very informative. In fact, he has succeeded on a Euro Swiss trade which I took this week as well, um, earlier this week with some difficulty. He also says that um, uh, Leon's videos are very high quality material. And uh, I also get another question from um, 
from traders saying, well, is it the same as what I put out on YouTube? What I put out on YouTube is a very small snippet, a very small part of the overall, of what we do in the group. So um, if you like the, uh, the the YouTube stuff that I do, then the, uh, the private mentoring group is going to blow your mind too much, you know, lots of content and um, again I'm very interactive we have fundamental live fundamental calls and trade uh, videos as well and um, webinars as well that you can see our call starts zoom call starts uh, we had one on the 16th anyways if you do want to join brilliant if not um, I have plenty of content on YouTube and um, maybe next time if I do open up anytime soon you may want to join then so uh, by the end of pretty much today London time that's going to be it for the foreseeable future anyways let's get back to the trading and going back to the euro dollar euro dollar go back onto the daily time frame charts um <clears throat> what have we got there delete let's see what we have right so european central bank um is in a bit of a uh, difficult situation right so the ecb is split on stimulus guidance as policymakers consider drafts so discussions said to be getting heated before the 22nd of july meeting talks on bond buying program won't happen until september and uh, what was interesting was that um uh, where was it now? It was talking about, yes, yeah, while the governing council un unanimously signed off on the language in the review, it also agrees that any premature tightening of policy must be avoided. It's more hawkish and more dovish members are some distance apart on how to reflect the new strategy in current policy. So the discussions will um, the discussions are becoming intense and heated, officials said. So um, when it comes to future and forward guidance on what the European Central Bank is potentially going to do, there's a lot of question marks around it, which makes Europe a bit more dovish, right? Which is hence the reason why you're seeing this. Right, you're seeing lower highs and lower lows continue, yeah, because you've got on one hand you've got the Federal Reserve, which at the moment are looking to high crates, and the European Central Bank um, are in a, in a state of uh, uh, confusion at the moment. They're not too sure on what to do. So as there's a lot of uncertainty, you would think that the path of least resistance is literally just looking at pullbacks and uh, shorting. Um, the euro dollar at least in the short term once europe do get their act together i do think though that europe and the euro should really have an, some explosive upside but it's really just about timing the um that and uh, for now i think against the dollar anyway i don't think that's coming um anytime soon so and as they said as, as the article kind of mentions um any anything to do with the uh uh, premature tightening um, of the policy must be avoided right so um, they are uh, very cautious of talking about potential hiking rates because again just like the US dollar and the US economy they don't want to hike rates too soon because it, the, the economy may not be able to support rate hikes and then it they basically the economy would be set back right and it would hurt the economy so for me if I'm looking at any kind of uh, um, uh, uh, trade on this currency pair. I think the path of these resistance is to the downside. There's also a lot of uh, bank forecasts that are forecasting the 117, 116, 115s over the next uh, couple months or so. Anyways, um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much it. If you do wanna get long, if there is a change in sentiment, then you're looking at anywhere within this uh, demand zone for um, any kind of long trades. Moving on to the Euro Yen. Euro Yen has come down into a decent spot. Level's been touched now uh, twice. Probably prefer this area to come down before getting long. Um, I do think overall that the Euro was as weak as it is or potentially dovish as the central bank is. Um, I, I do uh, think that against some currency pairs or some other currencies, um, it could be a, a decent buy. So um, there could be a buying opportunity right now, if not just at the lower zone, or if you're looking to buy the Japanese yen, not too sure why you would want to, but if you are, then 
looking for prices really to come back up to the, um, the, uh, the this supply zone. Again, you would really want to wait for some sort of risk off sentiment uh, to kind of justify me anyway, justifying uh, buying the Japanese yen as the uh, yen is a safe haven currency and would benefit from a risk off environment. Moving on to the Aussie dollar, Aussie dollar, the Australian dollar's lag a bit lagging behind uh the us dollar and again us dollar uh, at the moment ahead when it comes to potential monetary policy and hiking rates uh you're basically seeing this uh play out in price right um the australian uh, rba uh, reserve bank of australia are probably slightly more dovish um, then the uh, US Federal Reserve so you're seeing this play out and again if I'm looking to buy the Australian dollar which I am it's really not going to be against the US dollar because again you don't want to really trade or try to avoid I try to avoid trading anyway two currencies that are um, potentially strengthening or appreciating so um, if you do want to get involved in this to the downside again uh, continuing uh, buying the dollar against uh, the Australian dollar and uh, taking advantage of any kind of dollar hawkishness this would be the area and then you've got your supply zone just above that as well in case it does pull back to a decent zone which I do think probably be somewhere around here I think yeah that should be decent for a potential a short trade within that wide area of supply um, moving on to the Aussie yen and the Aussie yen um, again uh, we're coming down hopefully into a nice buy zone I do want to be a buyer of the Australian dollar just can't do it at just any random point for me this is where there was a nice um, area of demand uh, you can see here where prices pushed higher this was definitely seen as a bargain earlier in the year and the question is will this be seen as a bargain price um you know now in july right um if it does come down for me that's where I, i'm looking for any kind of buy trades if you are looking for any uh short trades then you're looking at supply zone right there waiting for a bit of a pullback again more risk off sentiment coming into the market could see prices uh, go to the downside but for me uh, for now as long as risk remains at least neutral to on then um, you know for me buying opportunities anywhere around this uh, demand zone is where I'm personally looking for um, uh, an opportunity to get in long uh, moving on to finally gold and gold again a bit of a strange one was we were talking about this in the group regarding um, uh, gold's a bit of gold's conundrum right because because you've got the dollar which is um, you know traders are generally a bit hawkish right an expectation of rate hikes which should appreciate the dollar which then should have the effect of depreciating gold because gold and uh, the US dollar work inversely but you also have another school of thought with regards to inflation so inflation is rising and when inflation rises especially when it's above the two percent target which is potentially getting out of control which is what um jerome powell um or larger than expected i won't say necessarily out of control but it's definitely larger than expected um that actually um inflation high inflation should have the effect of boosting gold higher right so you've got all these kind of conflicting um, uh, ideas going on with gold which one is going to prevail so when there is a lot of confusion or uncertainty in a trade what's the best thing to do for me is just not trade it right just don't trade you don't have to trade every single uh, uh, currency or asset class only trade when there are clear um, divergences convergences um, going on right that's where you want that's, that's what quality is all about when we when we speak about quality ideas and fundamentals right so but if you do want to get long then this is going to be the first demand zone to really look for any kind of long trades if you believe that the dollar should get weaker and inflation or it is really in fact it is getting weaker but as far as um uh the um federal reserve may not high rates soon they may start to delay hiking rates and the market starts to think well instead of doing it in 2023 it might be in 2024 then you're probably going to see gold make higher highs but if the federal reserve if the if gdp comes out really positive 
right, for the US, then you're probably going to see this happen because the expectation of a rate hike should cap the um, uh, any kind of dollar um, inflation which would then send gold to the downside, right? That's the fundamental analysis on this. Anyways, um, if you do want to get short, I'd probably wait for proof of value, so price to kind of maybe break that demand zone, and then maybe a bit of a pullback, and then looking at an area of supply, which would be somewhere around here, around this 1830 area, to look for any kind of short trades at the moment. So again, a bit of a tricky one, but the path of least resistance, in my view anyway, until really GDP comes out, is probably more to the upside, more, um, sorry, not, uh, sorry not, not, not the upside, uh, dollar upside but gold downside so potentially uh, more short trades to come depending on what the expectation for inflation is anyways guys that brings us to the end of the uh, weekly fundamental analysis video for those of you who stuck around and are still here I'm about to get into the um, the question that was posed earlier regarding um, bank a and bank a B. So again, just to remind you guys of the question, Bank A, the base currency, has an interest rate of 3%. The market thinks that Bank A may want to cut rates to 2.75 in six months. Bank B, which is the quote currency, has an interest rate of zero. The market thinks that Bank B will hold rates for the next six months. Should you go long or short that currency pair and why? So there were 125 votes so far. Um, 56 were saying long and 44% uh, were saying short. And I'm going to put you guys out of your misery. In fact, the, the shorts win. Um, so let's get into really the, the reasons why. And the answer is that you want to sell bank a as they are cutting rates yeah we should assume that if a central bank is cutting rates gdp right so gross domestic product is normally in the contraction the recession phase or the bust slump uh phase of the economic cycle yeah so whenever central banks are cutting rates yeah that's where we generally are in terms of um, the economic cycle yeah so remember that the market yeah so the smart money right are the smart money so that they are telling us what they think the central bank will likely do with rates so if they think that they're going to cut rates yeah it means that the smart money are positioning themselves right for a devalued currency cutting rates devalues a currency hiking rates has uh, the effect of appreciating a currency. So a central bank that is holding rates is usually or typically in the recovery phase of the economic cycle, although they do hold during the contraction phase also, yeah? Because they're on a wait and see approach if they're holding. They're waiting to see what the economy is going to do. But generally, holding is in the, uh, the, the, um, the recovery phase. So yes, Bank A has a higher interest rate, but due to rate cuts, rate cuts being devaluation, the market has to reprice the future expected change that rates will have on the currency. Therefore, the value of Bank A's currency is likely to fall because what do cuts generally do? devalue the currency that's the effect it should have so although bank b is holding rates and has a lower rate or a lower um, interest rate than bank a banks b or bank b's future value has already fully been priced in so what is known about the about bank b is that they're going to hold rates yes it might be for example they might be on zero but what is known about the value of that currency is known and has been fully priced in but as a result of Bank A's expected cut, the currency pair's exchange rate will likely fall because as previously mentioned, Bank A's currency appreciation strength needs to be addressed, yeah? So the valuation of Bank A's currency needs to be addressed, yeah? So the knock-on effect is is a sh is a short is to short bank A's currency as bank B's currency would appreciate as a result of bank A's attempts to depreciate theirs. Yeah. So again, imagine you have 
um, you know, uh, what is known, I guess maybe, maybe like even like a scale. One second, let me just uh, draw this out one sec. Right, so imagine you have a bit of a scale, yeah? Bit of a scale, in fact, let me draw that as, uh, change this to a nicer color, right? Right, let's say you have a scale. Yeah, and in fact, <laughs> I'm actually drawing that wrong again, right? Let's say, for example, you have a scale like this, right? Now, this is the weaker currency, this is bank B, yeah, and this may be bank A, right? Bank A is the heavier of the two. Now, if you adjust bank A's weight, if you make that lighter, what is going to happen? Bank B, yeah, or the weight of bank B hasn't been moved, you've only just adjusted bank A. So what's gonna end up happening to the scale? The scale is going to do something like this and rebalance, right? You have to rebalance A and B because A has changed, yeah? A has changed. So as a result, as a result of that, it may look like B is getting heavier, but it's not. It's A that's getting lighter, yeah? So if you take that concept, yeah, and apply it to um, uh, the, the, the Forex market, that is the reason why. I understand, yes, one has a higher interest rate than the other, but that's not how it works. It's not typically how it works. There's, there's further uh, nuances, right? And it's not my opinion, by the way. This is not my opinion. This is all backed up, and you guys have seen this book, or you might not have seen this book, but by Brent Donnelly, who is a market maker for HSBC. He also explains this concept, which I highly advise you to have a look at, and buy, um, it's a great book and really will assist you with your fundamental analysis. It's The Art of Currency Trading by Brent Donnelly and he explains this exact concept, yeah? This is a market maker, HSBC market maker telling you. So it's not, you know, my opinion, this is not some random person on YouTube telling you and you can disagree, right? If you're disagreeing with me, in fact, you're disagreeing with a HSBC market maker, yeah? With, I think he has over 20 years experience, right? So um, it's not my opinion. This is what the realities is are, as well as me, you know, trading through this and seeing and giving you, I can give you examples of this as well, right? I've traded through these examples, right? So that's your answer. Uh, thanks for, you know, um, taking part in the polls as well to all of you that have taken parts in the polls and even commenting as well this is a learning um exercise education the more you participate is the more that you will learn as well if you sit on the sidelines don't vote don't participate don't give your ideas how are you supposed to get any feedback and improve right so it's all about improvement and it's all about understanding we're not going to know everything about everything but as long as we you know take um, you know, knowledge from certain places and reputable sources, then, you know, our journey to uh, profitability and success within the markets should be on the upturn. Anyways, guys, take care. Hope you enjoyed that and uh, speak to you all soon.